Matthew 6 22 the lamp of the body is the eye the lamp of the body is the eye if therefore your eye is good your whole body will be full of what light let's pray father we thank you we thank you for a day like this we thank you for a year of focus we thank you for all that you will do in our lives today Lord we thank you for all that you will do in our lives the rest of this year Lord we pray that this year we'll focus on you in the name of Jesus for the Bible says in Matthew 6 33 seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing will be added unto us Lord even as we seek focus on you we know every other thing healing deliverance breakthroughs victories all even to you as will come in the name of Jesus long life good health they are all our portion this year in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen all right this morning I'm talking quickly quickly and I'm using PowerPoint so that I can work with the time redefining your focus is a year of focus amen redefining focus and we're starting with the scripture move with me quickly hallelujah redefining your focus tell somebody redefine your focus hallelujah and I've come with um, an acronym S S P T okay no go back to that first line you are fine the first one hallelujah we've read Matthew 6 22 Matthew 6 22 the lamp of the body is the high all right and if therefore your high is good if you can see clearly if your high is good your whole body will be full of light amen and we all know what light can do light drives away darkness when there's light there's illumination you see the goodness of God and if you can see very well how far you will go they said depends on how far you will see am I right hallelujah so if you can focus very well you will go very far this year if your eyes are good now okay I'm not really talking about your physical eyes I'm talking about your spiritual eyes hallelujah if your spiritual eyes are good now 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 I've asked it here before what we were taught you know if you have to choose between the blind the deaf and the and the dumb which one will you choose if someone gives an option to choose between what the blind the deaf and the dumb which one will you choose hallelujah amen okay you're not thinking now you will focus this year you will focus to choose right you will choose life instead of what death hallelujah if you are blind if you are blind you can't see the beauty of God you can't see the creation of God you can't see all that the Lord has done that is even when you are physically blind if you are spiritually blind it is very dangerous God is showing you things in the dream you don't see God is showing you things in so many foreign visions you don't understand and God speaks to us in dreams in visions remember in numbers he told Moses he told uh, the 
the, the Aaron and Miriam. Okay, now if you are blind spiritually, it's dangerous. If you are dumb, it's not a good thing. Am I right? Physically dumb. You can't hear. Am I right? You can't speak. If you are deaf, come to deaf now. You are deaf, it's not good. But if you are spiritually deaf, it's another level. It's not good at all. God is saying things to you you are not understanding. The pastor will say something you won't understand. Your parents will tell you, please take it easy. You are a young girl, you want to get married. And you've con you are confiding in your friends. Which of these two boys, brother, should I go for? And your friends that, are, that they sincerely love you, they've known brother A to be a playboy. And he's coming with a flashy car, or he's taking you out to everywhere you want to go. And you are carried away, and your friends are sincere. Please, my friend, brother A is not it. And you are thinking that, you are thinking that they are jealous. You are not hearing. You come to church, pastor in one way or the other, or the preachers, anybody will say something that you must act with wisdom. You are not hearing. Your parents will caution you. You are just deaf. And to be spiritually deaf is very dangerous, more than dangerous. Now to be dumb, what did I say? Shoot between what? Now, now you know that pastor is here again. He loves telling stories. I'm not Pastor Andrea. Now, to be spiritually what? Dumb, you are finished. You are, if you are dumb physically, you are finished. If you are spiritually dumb, you are totally what? Finished. If you can't talk. For some of us, we struggle out of that. The devil wants us to, to finish us. And we what? We, God by his mercies saved us from being dumb. Now why is it totally dangerous when you are dumb? Because if you are blind and you can talk, you can command your eyes to be open. Amen? As long as you are conscious spiritually, you can say blind eyes, open in Jesus name by faith with God's mercies your eyes can open am I right if you are deaf you can command your ears to be open ears open in Jesus name and with the power of God if you are deaf hallelujah may God have mercy on us this year you will not be deaf. You will not be dumb. In the name of Jesus, you will speak forth that that you desire. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where are we? Redefining what? The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good. If therefore your eye, what? Is good. Your whole body will be full of light. Shout hallelujah. Now the eye as used here depends, you no, know, it relates, it's, 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 it's about your heart. It's not your physical eyes. If your heart is focused, your entire body is good. You will make it. If you, are, if you have a focused heart, it's beyond the physical eyes that the Bible is talking about. It's about your heart. You must have a focused heart. Inner grit. Shout glory. Hallelujah. So if you want to succeed this year, you must give priority to what God is telling you within you must honor God. You must be a God 
seeker, you must serve him. Not, you must not focus on temporary wealth. You must not run after temporary wealth. If you read that scripture down, we read Matthew 6, 22. Now from 23 down to 24. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. What is it's meaning is that if your heart is corrupted, your entire body, you go nowhere. Now the verse 24 of that Matthew 6. Verse 24 of the Matthew 6. Let me go back to 23. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? 24. No one can serve two masters. You must focus on one this year. Amen. No one can serve what? Two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot what? Serve God and mammon. Hallelujah. You must know who to serve this year. You must know what? Who to serve this year. Shout hallelujah. Now, quickly, I've brought this. I'm running through now quickly. This year, we'll really look at, you know, we'll take time to teach the word of God more. The third one is what? The philosophy. Number three. And number four. Shout hallelujah. The self, the story, the philosophy, and the thing. The self, quickly, summarily, we can walk. Proverbs 4, verse 25 to 27. Media team, are you able to walk with me? Proverbs 5, verse 25. It's not on the, it may, it's not there. So just give me the scripture. Proverbs 5, 20, Proverbs 4, 25 to 27. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Proverbs 5, 25 to 27. Proverbs 4, sorry, 4, 25 to 27. Let your eyes look straight ahead. And your eyelids, let your eyes be focused. That's what it means. Am I right? Look straight ahead. Look towards the goal. Like a football player. You must look at the goal. Because that is your target. In, in that 19 minutes. Am I right? You must look at the goal. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. 26. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. Now let's have that in the message translation. My time is almost gone now. Quickly. The message translation. Proverbs 4. 25 to 26. Proverbs 4, 25. Keep your eyes straight ahead. Keep your eyes what? Straight ahead. Ignore all side shows this year. Oh, it's happening here. It's happening there. Ignore every side show. Keep your eyes what? Straight ahead. Be so focused that you don't allow anything to distract you. I've shared this story here before. When we came years ago, 22 years ago, we were so focused that, you know, you're studying, you are, you are, you are paying the international fees, and you, 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 you are thinking of how to make it. They're already calling you professor. Meanwhile, you are, you are locked out of the university. You don't know, you are not even in class. Because they've locked you out. You can't meet up the tuition. No, as, no, the timelines. So you are, you are scared of life. So in those days, you are, from sometimes you get out of lecture hall to, to go and take a shift. Am I right? Am I right? You are not the only one that have done that. When they call you, 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 you have to, is that, is that a skill of preference? Which one to go for? Stay in class or go for the shift? 
you will, you will tell your friend, I will see you after the lecture. Amen. You disappear. So, in, so by the time you're coming back from work, you are in the lecture, you are in the library, you are studying. And there was this particular day coming out and you have to meet a deadline to get a paper across to your supervisor the next day or two. Studying in the library. And here was a, a sister, a girl, in the library, just playing with the bookshelves. Just disturbing. And I need my one hour, two hours to focus on my studies. And I saw the student doing disturbing I didn't look at the person, just studied, finished my one hour, went home, went to my hostels to sleep or whatever. Then a day or two days after, I went to my, my, my neighbor's room, the next room, to just my, my neighbor on the same flat, and I saw this sister in the room. And she just ran to the door and locked the door. And I said, what's happening? Why are you? I don't know you. She said, at last, I'm in the same room with you. Hallelujah. At last, I'm in the same room with you. I saw you in the library the other day. I tried to get your attention. You didn't look at my direction. Hallelujah. I mean, I did everything to make sure that you can look at my attention, but you didn't look at my attention. Here you are in the same room. Today, you must what? <laughs> you must give me attention. Hallelujah. And I said, young, young girl, what is the problem? She said, I'm in a mess. I'm doing a master's program. They said, you are doing a PhD. I've heard your name in the university, you know, and you are self-financing. And uh, I'm doing a master's program. I, can't, I don't know how I can continue. So tell me how to go about it. Just tell me how you are surviving how you are going about your PhD, self-financing. Just put me through. And I said, is that why you are locking the room? And I sat her down and I began to talk. She's now a pastor. Hallelujah. But the point is focus. I was so focused that any other thing is a distraction. My life was in my hands. I have to make it happen or not. Hallelujah. Glory be to his holy name. Where am I? Focus. <laughs> Amen. Proverbs, we're in Proverbs 4, 25 to 27. Now, let's look neither right nor left and all that. Let's continue. There, number one, the self. The what? The self, I think that's, I don't know how far we can go, but that's where in the next few minutes I'll round up. The self, number one thing you must know in this year is that never compromise your self story. You have a story. You can, you can hear me telling my story. It's my story. I own my story. You know the journey you've come from. You've known the journey. You've known how far you've come. Am I right? It's, I mean, that journey should propel you. That, that your past should propel you to make sure that you tell yourself, I ain't failing. I must succeed. I, I, I told some people last year, your friend, your person next to you in the classroom or even in the church can afford to go and sleep, but you can't afford to go and sleep. That person has, if it's in a school situation, that person has all his tuition paid for. Oh, I'm going to sleep. You want to go and sleep. You are on your own. Am I right? That person has everything paid for. Accommodation paid for. So because he's going to party, then you two want to join them to go and party. At the end, you will tell. Amen? You can't afford to go to London and party with them. You cannot. They're going to sleep. You go to work. Or you go and study. You don't have time like them. They have everything. What? Sorted. So you know your story. You know what? Your story. For some, you are the first generation of graduates or master students or whatever. So you can't behave like the other person. Own your story. Own your story. Never compromise your story. Number two, 
That's the self, about the self, your self story. Number two, always prioritize your foundations. I'm running through now. Your foundation, your background. If the foundation is faulty, what can the righteous do? Always, that on the self, on the story, number second part, the story. In your story, friction can create value. Things that you don't like, the problems, the challenges that come your way, they can be an added bonus. They can be a bonus. They can be, God can, Romans 8, 28, they can all work together for your good. The frictions, the, 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 the things that, all the annoyance, all the disappointments, amen, they can become good for you. I've shared it here before. We were young and we were brothers in the church and, you know, sometimes they will laugh. Brother, who, who is the sister here? And we were once in the camp, the camp in Lagos, uh, in Nigeria, in West Africa, and we were brothers and sisters. We were all just doing the things of God and we were just joking. Who is, who is the sister? Who is the brother? And someone said, Brother Akbo, don't you look, no, don't you look, aren't you seeing, look at the choir. The sister is there. This was 2001 or 2000, 2000. The sister is there and I was, the person talking was the person I was hiding. A course on the school teacher. And I was thinking like, if, if there's anybody here, you know, around me, it will be this sister. And she's, not the one telling me I should look at somewhere else. That means I've got nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. So all that will work together what? Since there was no hope for me there, I have to look what? And look at what I found. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So in your story, all the frictions, all the disappointments, everything. If you are focused on God, they will work for your good. Shout hallelujah. Now, in your story, hear this quickly. The frame matters more than the picture. Now, you can't get this with time in the year. We'll, we'll, we'll go into that. In your story, the frame, do you see it? Like a photograph, all the photographs you have in your house. Hmm? You've got your photo there. The frame, the frame of the photo matters more than the picture. Okay, time will not allow me to go into. You, you that's why you look for beautiful frames. If you have a frame that is tattered and you have a good photo there, it will make the photo what? Worthless. I won't go deeper. The frame matters more than the what? The picture. The frame. Okay, I will leave it there for now. For now, because of our time today. Hallelujah. Now, in your story, hear this quickly. In your story, fight for the first five seconds. In your story, fight what? For the first five seconds, and that five seconds can mean anything in your life. That means when opportunities come, grab it, go for it. They said opportunities once what? And what? You may not have it again. Know the Kairos moment, as we say it in spiritual language, the defining moment. When there are opportunities, know that this is a Kairos moment and grab it. Hallelujah. The self, the story. Now, the philosophy, quickly. The philosophy. I can go all over this, but more deeper, but not for today. The philosophy. You must sweat the small stuff. You must what? Don't say this does not matter. Oh, this does not matter. Yesterday, yesterday, okay, I was sharing the story earlier this morning. 
29th, we started fasting and prayer. Am I right? Three days before the. So we fasted, we prayed, I was fasting, we were praying. 30th, we came here, we prayed for six hours. All right? We came to church 6 a.m., we prayed till 12 noon day, one hour, we moved to Kitley. No, by 12 1, we met, one o'clock, we met in Kitley. We had a revival, let's go fishing, winning souls. We had a service, three finished, but 3 30 we are back, we are back four, we are back here. Then I was going to Aldi, is it Aldi for food, food surplus? You know, we brought some food items. Then, then we did that. Then the next day, the night I didn't sleep on my bed. I was I, I was in the living room throughout the whole night. That's in the 30th night. 30th night. I didn't go to bed. I was awake or most of the night awake. Then early in the morning, we are in church for the 31st. I'm going somewhere now quickly. Finish service. We are here preparing for the crossover service. I have to go to Haldi for food. Food items. Then I have two collections. Haldi, the Master and Spencer. But when I was coming back from Haldi, I got to Foster Square traffic light. First red light, I stopped. And before you know it, I slept off. I was literally on my steering, but I was off. I was what? Off this world. I remember that morning I said, the day is not over. The day is not over until we cross over before it's over. I am, that was my last statement here on the Sunday, last Sunday, that the day is not over. Thank God we are rejoicing. But the day is not over. As I got to the traffic, my first square, I slept by Tesco. Tesco, if you know, Brickfield Road. I slept off and I was on my, on my stair. Within two, I don't know how many seconds, but I was off. Hallelujah. The small stuff. What did I say? Sweat the small stuff. So we did that. I, I woke up. I don't see red light. So I, I quickly drove, got to church, gave the food items here, went back again to Max and Spencer, brought in the plenty of food items. Again, the ones that we use for the crossover. I brought that out. Then that means I've been awake for so for most of the hours. Now where I'm going it was yesterday. I had a collection in St. Breeze and Max and Spencer. And I went to St. Breeze. They said, okay, I needed the high beam vest. Normally, we pick upstairs, but I was to go downstairs, the delivery side, and they refused me entry. So I went to Haldi, picked those ones, came back home, picked the IV vest, went back, and John was with me. I was bringing him to church for choir, and he said, Daddy, must you go back to St. Breeze again? And I said, yes. It may not matter now, but it will matter in the future. Whether it's one item, one bread loaf they are giving to us, it may matter. This sweat what? This, don't say it doesn't matter. That's where I'm going. Some things that we do, if we must go for this year. Sweat what? The small stuff. Now, I'm taking too much time there now. Number two there in philosophy. A small miss now creates a bigger miss later. If you miss a small opportunity, if you are not careful, you will miss a big opportunity. That's why you must focus early that you don't miss even small opportunities. You know some big opportunities are packaged in the small things, despite not the days of what? Small beginnings. It may look very small, but grab it. That may lead, that's job, that little job, that two hours they say you travel to go and do in Wakefield. Go and do it. If there's no other commitment, that two hours can lead to your permanent job. Hallelujah. If you miss the small, you will miss something bigger later. Thirdly, dear, your skills are worthless, but your contest 
is valuable. Don't rely so much on your skills, but the contest, how you apply it, matters more than your skills. I'm giving you some principles. Finally, all this will go through deeper this year. Now, on the focus, the team, ask who, not how, who is doing this? Who is the, that's why, who, that's why we are starting with a divine encounter, the God seeker. Amen? Who? Not how. Who is involved? Anything you want to do. Who? Know the who behind. If you can know God, the, the how, leave it for God to do. How God will take you far this year? Know the who. What did I say? Ask who, not how. Ask who. And God is the one that I said, seek after him. And all the things we need will be added unto us. Now, two more. Now, we, I've got so much on all of this, but I'm just summarizing now. Create a cult mentality this year. And I've said this on a few days. A, a cult, cult, C-U-L-T, and I mean it. Create a cult mentality. Some things that you do is as if you are in a cult. You are so committed. I was telling Pastor Ola and some of those that have, the way we prayed in this church, it was like a cult. When we started, we were, we were praying in this building every day. Every day we must make sure that we step our feet on the building to pray for at least one hour. Whether I'm here or I'm not here, every day I must, somebody must be in this building one hour to pray. Pastor, what, it was like a cult. It was like, if, if, we, if we don't pray here, it was like we are hoping to all attacks. To the extent that one day, I shared it during the prayers recently, one day somebody, I was, I was passing by, I parked by the car park, sunny day, I was living by Tesco here, and I parked by the car park just in the afternoon. I saw, I was in my car. Somebody was coming around, just moving around, a brother was just moving over the building. For, I was in the car, I was just there, just looking at him. At some point, I came out of the car and I said, brother, come, there's no service. There's no prayer time. Why are you moving around the building? He said, I've got so much problem in my house. And I can't stay at home. So I know that if I come to the church premises, if I can touch only the wall alone, my prayers will be answered. That was how we value the premises. Hallelujah. We are in those seasons, as I shared recently, whereby, whereby we have a service. Somebody will be passing by, a passerby. We've closed a conference meeting and time for refreshment. The minister was going out to be refreshment. Somebody was outside, kneeling down, praying, I want Jesus. And the minister asked, why are you not going inside? And how did you get here? Oh, I was passing by. A power drew me to come and give my life to Christ. We were here on the Sunday service, two young boys, they came in the morning and while prayer and worship was going on, they ran to the altar to give their life to Christ, not preaching. And we asked them, why are you, it's not, it's not time for altar call. Oh, God spoke to us in the night that we must come and give our life. This year we will seek God. I can tell you stories. When I say that, yes, we are jumping, we pray, we are far from the level at which we are operating. Sometimes you guys say, Papa, Pastor, we do a lot. <laughs> we know how we, we invested. We will get there again. And this year, we will get there. In the mighty name of Jesus. Where was I? Philosophy. My time. <laughs> the team. Hallelujah. Okay, the team, the who, not the how, create a cult mentality. Learning never ends. I will stop there. Learning never ends. Hallelujah. Now, two scriptures to guide us, then we, we rejoice. Isaiah 26, verse 3. It says, you will, Isaiah 26, 23. Now, it's on the PowerPoint now. I will end here. I've got, I will stop it with this. 
Isaiah 26, 23, that's some PowerPoint, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. As you seek him this year, God will give you peace. In the name of Jesus. Colossians 3, verse 2, it says, Set your mind on things above, not on things on the head. Hallelujah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing will be added unto you. Shout glory. Psalm 61, verse, Psalm 62, verse 1. Truly, my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. Let's rise up, church. Hallelujah. Clap, clap for Jesus. And now I'm just on the first two slides now. I've got about four or five in that presentation, but I can't get here this morning. Why not just go ahead and just thank God? We want to rejoice now, but before then, just appreciate God. Just thank God this year. Because God has a load of things to unfold for us this year. Just go ahead and just bless the name of Jesus.